Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah hamdan hamdan wa nashkuru syukran syukran wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi. Wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla wa may yudlil fala hadiya. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tasliman katsiran madida rabbi shrah li sadri. ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربي زدنا علما ورزقنا فهما سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم وفقنا بعلم وعمل بما تحب وترضى اللهم ارزقنا اخلاصا في القول والعمل اي بريت الله سبحانه وتعالى ذات ميد سيشن بي مينز اوف سالفيشن For the sins we have committed, I mean, I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for every seconds and minutes where we invest in for this session, may this investment of ours be amongst our investment to draw ourselves closer to our make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He grant me the ability to present and may He grant you the ability to understand whatever goodness solely lies in the hands of our maker and whatever evil I like to ascribe to myself and then shaitan. Alhamdulillah. Praises and thanks to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us opportunity to continuously nourish ourselves through knowledge where he has bestowed upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is the means of elevation of our iman towards our maker. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in to this episode of uh, Nurturing a Vibrant Muslim Society. In our <clears throat> previous session, we had the opportunity to discuss on how one upholds the ties of kinship according to the teaching of Islam. Progressing forward from where we have paused from our previous session, in today's session, we would like to discuss on how one can maintain the ties of kinship even if his relative are a non-Muslim. So no doubt that we, many converts amongst us, they still have their uncles and aunts and even their immediate family members, their immediate family members who are, who have, who might not have the opportunity to be introduced to the religion of Islam. And even if the opportunity is presented to them, they might not be very open to the discussion about religion. As such, how one needs to maintain the ties with their non-Muslim relation. So the tolerance and humanity of Islam goes far as to enjoin upholding the ties of kinship even if the relatives are not Muslim. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-Ahaz radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he once heard Prophet openly saying, the family of Abu so and so are not my friends. For my friends are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the righteous believers but they have ties of kinship with me, which I will recognize and uphold. When the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, وَأَنزِرْ أَشِيرَتَكَ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ was revealed to him, the Prophet Sermon, the Quraysh, they gathered and addressed them both in general and in specific terms. O Banu Abu Abdul Shams, O Banu Ka'ab ibn Lu'ayy, save yourself from hellfire. O Banu Murrah bin Ka'ab, save yourself from hellfire. O Banu Abdul Manaf, save yourself from hellfire. O Banu Hashim, save yourself from hellfire. O Banu Abdul Muttalib, save yourself from hellfire. O Fatima, save yourself from hellfire. For indeed, I cannot do anything to protect you from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are ties of kinship between us which I will recognize and uphold. So look at how clear the statement of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was towards his own relative. Majority or the entire bulk of them, they did not embrace Islam. They recognize the religion. 
However, the faith have not reached to their heart. But as a relation, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is connected through, uh, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is connected with uh, his uncles and aunt, he continuously reminded them at the end of the day that the reality of life is when you and I are going to face the hellfire. And none is able to save them when the hellfire is in front of them. So as such, he was a messenger to send as a reminder, but he, he himself is not the giver of faith. <clears throat> Hidayah comes only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from any individual. So as such, the Muslim's heart overflows with humane emotion, which spills over into his good treatment of his relatives, even if they are not Muslim. The expression of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he states, but there are ties of kinship between us which I will recognize and uphold. Literally, moisten is an example of Arabic eloquence, a metaphor in which the kinship tie is likened to the earth and is irrigated by upholding it so that it bears fruit of love and purity. If it is cut off, it becomes barren and produces only hatred and animosity. The true Muslim is on good terms with everyone and is liked by everyone as they see good characteristic embodied in him. Hence, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala who did not see anything wrong with giving a garment that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had sent to him to his half-brother through his mother who was a mushrik. So, at times, gift can be a means for, for others. What I mean here by others is the non-Muslim relative to at least be introduced to the religion through the exchange of gift where we practice with them. Sometimes it can be government. At times, government can come along with other messages which might interest them in at least knowing about the religion. <clears throat> at least they are open to the conversation. We have already seen how Islam encourages us to treat our parents with kindness and respect even if they are mushrikeen and now we see how it encourages us to treat our relatives equally well even if they are not muslim this is an indication of tolerance and humanity of islam which is not surprising when we remember the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he reveals in the Quran, in Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter number 20, 21, verse number 107, when Allah states, Wa ma illa For indeed we have sent you not but as a mercy to the entire creatures. So it's, it's the Rahmah, it is not binded upon the Muslims only. The Rahmah is for regardless of race, language, or all, all religion. It's open to everyone. But, however, the, when the mercy is managed in accordance to how the legislator wants us to manage, then the individual would then qualify for the eternal mercy which waits for the individual when they successfully graduate out of this life. And the saying of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which goes, verily, I have been sent to complete good behavior and attitude. So when a Muslim presents himself with the most upright character and behavior, that character, the way we present ourselves, the way we speak to the individual, the way we talk to them, these are amongst a means for us to invite the non-Muslim relation 
to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can see throughout the da'wah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Makkah, like in instance, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, وَأَنزِرْ أَشِيرَتَكَ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arranged for a nice buffet for his uncles and aunts to come and enjoy the buffet in his place. He had the spread of food while he was married to Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha. He literally gave them food. They ate the food. They enjoyed the food. And then there was an opportunity for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to present the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the uncles knew that he was about to present this new message which they were not familiar with. However, during that point of time, Prophet could have presented, but he just made them enjoy the food and then they stepped out of his house without having any conversation or discussion regarding the matter of Islam. That was how he presented himself to his own relation. He saw the opportunity. He saw the opportunity. The opportunity was there. However, he literally understand the situation that his uncles were not very keen and open to discussion on the matters of this religion where he was presenting to them. So as such, he took a step back. He gave them the full good hospitality, gave them the best treatment, and then they went out of the house. But in the subsequent settings, in the subsequent incidents, in subsequent uh, occurrence, that's when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then encouraged the his own relation to embrace Islam, inviting them to embrace Islam. So as we can see, that behavior and attitude plays a pivotal role in Islam. And a Muslim is the one who fully understands the meaning of upholding the ties of kinship. Why is that so? For a true Muslim, upholding the ties of kinship is one of the teachings of our Iman. Right? Amongst Iman is to uphold ties. It is not just the matter of spending money. However, it goes beyond that. These ties are upheld by spending money on poorer relative and also by visit by visiting them which reinforce the relationship spreading mutual love and kindness by advising and helping one another selflessly by speaking kind words to relatives by greeting them warmly with a smiling face and caring attitude and by other good deeds which will fill hearts with love and extend ties of mutual support among one's relative. This was the advice given by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who urged the Muslim to uphold the ties of kinship even the simplest way. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, maintain your ties of kinship even if it is merely with a greeting. The least we can do if we dislike that individual. Yes. If you dislike that uncle, you might have you might had a dispute with that uncle. You might had a dispute with your aunt. You might have dispute with your your own siblings. But you still we still need to maintain and retain the tie. And what is the minimal? Is because you do not want to engage in a heated <coughs> discussion or conversation so as such you maintain and retain the tie by just giving the salute by just saluting by giving salamu alaikum to that person and then just walk off no not do not even need to ask you 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 need not even need to ask how are you the least you need to do is by stating assalamu alaikum no need to even shake hands just say assalamu alaikum and then you can move forward wide so that 
when you know that when two individuals engage in conversation, these two individuals come, uh, comes in contact, they will always have or wish war, or will have a very heated discussion. So as such, you do not want to engage in conversation which will make you far away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> And a Muslim is the one who maintains the tie of kinship even if his relative fails to do so. How is that so? The, the true Muslim maintains the ties of kinship even if his relative fails to do so because the one who upholds this tie purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in adherence to the highest Islamic teaching does not expect to be treated equally well by his relatives in return. He always upholds the ties of kinship regardless of whether his relative do so or not. To set an example in all his dealing with his relative of the way Islam molds people and makes them noble and descent. Prophet Muhammad Wasallam reinforced this meaning of the true Muslim when he said the one who maintains a relationship with his, with his relative only because they maintain a relationship with him is not truly upholding the ties of kinship. The one who truly upholds those ties is the one who does so even if they break off the relationship. So look at this profound advice by our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. That the Prophet Muhammad wasallam offered advice which serves to reinforce the attitude of kindness, patience, forgiveness and tolerance in the heart of the person who is trying to uphold the ties of kinship but receives only rejection and bad treatment in return. He stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with whoever seeks to treat his relatives well but does not receive similar good treatment in return. And he painted a frightened picture of the scene which befalls those who deny good deeds and refuse to uphold the ties of kinship. A man came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, I have relatives with whom I try to keep in touch, but they cut off the tie away from me. I treat them well, but they abuse me. I am patient and kind towards them, but they insult me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If you are as you say, then it is as if you are putting hot dust in their mouth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to support you as long as you continue to do that. So we have many situations <clears throat> in our day-to-day -day life where we find that certain relation of ours, they just do not want to mingle along with us or mingle together with us. And they know that when they mingle together with us, it will only cause friction and heated debates to the extent that they will start to abuse you verbally and you will start to abuse them verbally or even if you do not abuse them verbally, you re restrain your tongue from articulating hurtful words but you retain your, you maintain your coolness throughout the period when they are articulating Words which are very critical. So as such, we must be patient in the cause of for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because this effort of yours is highly regarded and supported by our maker. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the full support. <clears throat> they might not be well versed in the blessings and the rewards where one attains through meeting each other and particularly meeting of the relation however you who are you who is aware of this reward must be uh, you must continuously strive your utmost best to uh, maintain these ties with your love, uh, with your loved ones, and see how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala extends His support and help 
to the one who puts up with bad treatment from his relatives in response to his efforts to uphold his ties with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills his heart with patience to bear their abuse and give him strength to maintain his noble attitude. The Prophet sallallahu likened the scenes which befalls those hard-hearted miscreants to the pain which befalls the one who eats hot dust as a punishment for their abuse and mistreatment of this warm-hearted, generous person who only seeks to do what is right. So the true Muslim, <clears throat> what is his role? What is the role of a true, true Muslim? He upholds ties. What are amongst the roles of a true Muslim is to uphold the ties of kinship in every case, always seeking to earn the pleasure of his rock, rising above the foolish insults and bad behaviors that occasionally occur among relatives and refusing to become embroiled in the petty trivial issues that occupy lesser minds and make people angry. While the true Muslim knows better than to allow foolish petty matters affect his relationship with an attitude towards his relative. He remembers the words of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, where he states, the ties of kinship is suspended from the throne of Allah and says, whoever supports me, Allah will support him and whoever cuts me off, Allah will cut me off. <clears throat> so the kinship has a role, a very important role in the life of every single true Muslim. A Muslim who's dedicated to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's aware that there is immense amount of reward which awaits for the individual. He will continuously make efforts, find for avenues, find for rooms where he is able to accumulate more rewards which will then give him higher probability to secure his paradise in the hereafter. Even with, uh, even with the person fully aware, even when the person is fully aware that, you know, me maintaining time with these family members is not easy. It's truly really not easy. The more harder it gets, the more a reward you and I will earn. So if you're unable to engage in a conversation, then when you meet them, just say Assalamu Alaikum and then you go off. There's no harm in just saying Assalamu Alaikum. But if you are <clears throat> aware that to even say the Salam, it will cause problem and trouble now at this junction, at this very junction, you must be wise enough to not to say Assalamu Alaikum because your saying of Assalamu Alaikum might cause more trouble than for you not to say. So you need to understand the situation you are in. No one knows the situation you are in except for yourself. No one can uh, have access and no one can analyze the situation better than yourself. So you must be very tactful, careful, why at the end of the day, the purpose of it is having the togetherness. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants as much as possible is how can we find the uniformity between the ummah and the uniformity between the ummah starts from the family members, from the, sim from the parents, the siblings, the immediate relation, the extended relation, <clears throat> all these practices will be a means to draw oneself closer to our maker Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember that these are amongst a way, these are amongst the way to continuously receive the mercy of our maker. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us many avenues and opportunities for us to experience his mercy. So when we are in those 
gatherings together with our relative, that's when you're able to exchange the mercy and you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman. You're able to literally experience within yourself that ar-Rahman exists, that ar-Rahman is the one who has given me the opportunity to join this rahim, these ties together with my relative. And when I'm with them, I'm able to exchange. If you're unable to exchange those gifts, you're having this friction, then the minimal I need to do is for me to say assalamu alaikum. And if I am unable to practice the minimal, then you keep quiet, right? Keep quiet, move away. Not even by saying salam alaikum. Salam means is to find peace. <clears throat> so sometimes, at times, not at all times, but at times, keeping silence is a means of reconciling between two individuals or between two groups. Sometimes silence is a way to to reconciliation, right? Sometimes silence is a way of reconciliation between two individuals or two groups. So hopefully what I have shared with you today is beneficial for me and beneficial for you. Whatever goodness solely lies in the hands of our Maker Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever evil I would like to ascribe to myself and then shaitan, akulumatasbahun, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wal asri innal insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasa bil haq wa tawasa bil sabr Jazakumullahu khairun jaza Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh